Hi guys, um, so I thought I'd say a little bit about um, sword sticks. Um, sword sticks are something that turn up in movies a uh, fair amount, um, but what maybe most people don't realise is that sword sticks are actually fairly common um, as antiques. So if you go to antique auctions or antique shops and you keep your eyes open and you look around uh, for walking sticks, if you look out for the telltale sign of a sort of metal ferrule or some kind of line, uh, usually a sort of uh, uh, six or eight inches down from the, from the uh, top end, um, and you give them a waggle, often you find that inside the uh, stick is a sword blade. Now, um, the first thing to say is that they're actually relatively common. And when I started, um, I've been collecting antique swords for many years, uh, for half my life in fact, um, but when I started looking around for sword sticks I was very surprised to see how many there actually are around available. Um, and so the first thing that, uh, the first conclusion you can draw from that is that actually they weren't uncommon um, in the Victorian and Edwardian period. Most of them seem to date from the end of the Georgian period, say the 1820s, through to about the beginning of the First World War sort of period. So Georgian, um, uh, Victorian and through to Edwardian, so about a hundred years. Um, uh, and presumably there were a fair number of people wandering around uh, the streets, probably places where they didn't feel particularly safe, carrying a sword stick. Um, in, in Britain and France people did uh, during the 19th century and even up to the beginning of the 20th century occasionally carry firearms concealed um, if they thought that they were travelling through a dodgy area or felt themselves at risk but generally speaking unlike in America the carrying of firearms was, um, although it wasn't legally restricted in the 19th century it was sort of socially frowned upon a bit um, for whatever reasons, um, unlike in America. So whereas the carrying of guns um, was and in some parts of America still is very common, um, in Europe the carrying of other things was more common. And hence we see the uh, Bartitsu and Defense uh, de la Rue um, uh, systems come to, come to the fore in, in the sort of uh, latter half of the 19th century for actually using things like uh, walking stick, sticks umbrellas and even things like knuckle dusters and knives for self-defense um, against ruffians, muggers, um, potentially assassins and, and so on. Um, so the sword stick seems to have been not uncommon, um, although as far as I know it's not really dealt with, uh, it's mentioned in passing in a couple of manuals but it's not dealt with systematically in any manual of use at all. Now the second thing to say about them based on, on ones that I've seen is the vast majority of sword sticks have a very thin um, and usually quite flexible um, thrusting blade. Okay, so they're, they're really the, um, only for poking. I've only seen, of the probably I've seen 100 or 200 uh, antique examples, I've only ever really seen a handful that could really convincingly be used for a chop. Obviously if they're sharpened on the edge you could use them for a push or pull cut uh, but not really for cutting, they're generally thrusting weapons and therefore someone who practices fencing of the, of the foil fencing uh, type or perhaps epee fencing which only came in in the um, latter half of the 19th century if they learn classroom fencing they could probably use uh, one of these quite effectively um, however, um, if you come up against someone else with a sword uh, you're going to be at a big disadvantage with a sword stick um, generally uh, and basically because you don't have a guard okay so all you've got is a long thin blade which is great for stabbing someone who's maybe got a knife or, or potentially even a, a pistol that you grab or, or just a stick um, so it's good for stabbing, stabbing someone who doesn't have a sword but someone who has a sword is going to have a huge advantage over you so the sword stick unlike in, in Hollywood movies the sword stick by itself is not very good against an actual sword because the sword is better balanced, generally longer uh, and it's got a, a hand guard on it which is incredibly important of course because a thrust can go very easily through your hand and disable you. Um, however balancing that you do remember that once you've drawn the thing you've got two items you don't just have the sword stick you have what's essentially the scabbard, the other part of the stick so potentially you could use one for parrying and the other for thrusting which is, which is quite a nice thing.
Um, so, uh, and the, the other thing to say as well, I suppose, is that most antique sword sticks are quite short. Um, the ones that have actually sword length blades, I would say probably only make up about 25 uh, percent, a uh, quarter, or perhaps a third of, of, of antique examples. Most of them are quite short, so they're really a long uh, dagger, essentially, uh, a long uh, sort of stiletto. Um, so there we go, sword sticks in a nutshell. Um, they're fairly common. Uh, they're not very good against a sword, but quite good against someone who's got something less than a sword. Um, and um, they come in various shapes and forms, different types of handle. Um, and the blades tend to be shorter than sword length. One last thing I'll mention, I have seen some antique examples which do have a guard which actually springs out of the handle when you draw it. Obviously a more expensive and technologically advanced version of the sword stick. Um, so clearly some people had recognised that the sword stick by itself uh, was lacking in the guard area and so they tried to compensate for that. Um, in various ways. So there we go, sword sticks, quite cool. If you're in the UK, remember that a modern sword stick is illegal. It's one of the banned weapons in Britain and I believe in other Europe, certain other European countries it's also banned. However, antique ones are not banned and not restricted. You can't carry them in the street, of course, because they're still a concealed weapon and they're still a weapon, but you can buy and sell them because they are antiques, i.e. Uh, before 1900, let's say, okay? So over 100 years old. Great, thank you.